the main kind history, the satisfaction of human needs has been the major objective of development, and it has always been supported by the capacity of using natural resources. However, the rapidly growing population and economic growth are leading to unsustainable pressures on resources. The overexploitation and misuse of limited natural resources are causing irreversible environmental and economic damage, and their unequal distribution among countries is affecting the international security, leading to social and political instability, conflicts and massive migrations. Sustainable development is the response set by governments researchers and civil society to this awareness. This crisis will only worsen unless we change paradigms. It came to public awareness more than 35 years ago, after the publication named Our Common Futures, which followed the 1983 World Commission on the Environment and Development, chaired by Harlem Brutland. In the report, sustainable development is defined as the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This concept was then included into the three multilateral environmental treaties reached in 1992 at the Rio Earth Summit on Climate Change, Biodiversity and Desertification. Starting from the Brutland Commission's report in 1987, the concept has been undertaken and recalled during the last decades, marking the recent international community debate. Different approaches have been adopted, but the essential principle of sustainable development has been the integration of the multidimensional and multifaceted concerns that characterize this challenge. Indeed, sustainable development requires the overcoming of the fragmentation in favor of the integration of economic, environmental, and social objectives across sectors, territories, and generations. The economic well-being of a country represents its material prosperity, and it is the first pillar of sustainable development. The economic growth of the past decades contributed to highly increase the world average well-being, reduce extreme poverty and infant mortality, and increase the life expectancy at birth. It also led to a rapid increase of the population and to a significant transition to urbanization and from agriculture to manufacture and service provision. The reinforcing dynamics of economic and population growth have a massive impact on our planet. And making this environmentally more sustainable and inclusive is the main challenge of sustainable economic development. The swift economic growth we have been experiencing from the last two centuries has obvious implications in the quantity of energy from fossil fuels we are exploiting, the water we are consuming, the chemicals we are releasing, the forest we are cutting to devote the land to agricultural and breeding activities, and the pollution we are accumulating in the air and the waterways. Indeed, it is no coincidence that the geologists call our era as Anthropocene, that is the human age of the planet, which refers to the human activities that are changing the climate's temperature, melting the glaciers, and threatening other species. So, environmental sustainability, which is the second pillar of sustainable development, means identifying the safe operating limits for the planet, understanding the risks associated to the crossing of these planetary boundaries, and determining what we must do for staying within these safe operating limits, while granting an equitable and inclusive development for all. Social inclusion is indeed the third pillar of sustainable development, since inequalities represent the barriers to the prosperity of a country. Every person has the right to live in a proper social environment, with the same opportunity and capability to pursue its own goals and ambitions, where the well-being is shared by all the population, with no gender inequality, no racial and religious differences. In accordance with Jeffrey Sachs, in this holistic approach, sustainable development has to respond to the complex nature behind the economy, environment, social factors and challenges affecting our society. And second, 
it envisages the need of identifying practical goals for improving our world. Sustainable development does not offer a single or one size fits all answers, but it may provide the instruments and a holistic view for dealing with these multifaceted and interconnected challenges. When the world's governments met in June 2012, at a meeting known as the Rio Plus 20 Summit, the world's governments called for a new set of goals to guide the world during the next 15 years period, from 2015 to 2030. With the Rio Plus 20, the UN started the process called Post-2015 Development Agenda, began in May 2013 and ended in August 2015, with a final document adopted at the UN Sustainable Development Summit in September 2015 in New York City. The document, called Transforming Our World, the 2013 Agenda for Sustainable Development, set the official launch of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. The agenda confirms the dimensions of sustainable development, introducing an additional specification of five areas of critical importance to humanity and the planet. People, planet, prosperity, peace and partnership. Such identification draws the attention on the human perspective, both as individuals and collectivity, and strengthens the importance of empowerment and ownership as necessary conditions for countries to undertake their local development. Each goal includes specific targets to be reached by 2030, which are integrated and indivisible. Totally, the UN set 169 targets and 232 unique indicators that aim at tracking the progress towards the achievement of the targets. The agenda highlights that we are the players of these challenges, the ones that can actively contribute to reach all these 169 targets and embark it on the road to 2030. The future of humanity and of our planet lies in our hands by giving birth to new paradigms in business, education and also science.